Edith LeBert here backstage with Harry Hardwick after one more victory, second, second fight with Cage Warrior, second victory. How are you feeling right now? Um, rough. He, he was a little tank. Like everything, I felt like everything I was hitting him with just wasn't hurting him. And then he caught him with a body kick at the like, dying seconds of the first round. And it just sucked the life out of me. Like I was, I was like rocked for the, like my body was killing me. It still hurts, like crunching up and down hurts. And it was like that for the entire rest of the fight. It, was felt, it felt like it just like took a part of me away. I had no like push after that. I had, to, I had to really dig deep just to get into clinch positions and kind of stall a little bit, to be fair. Um, I felt like that's not a performance to really shout home about, but the opponent who I beat, definitely someone to shout home about. Conor is a beast. Did it happen at the beginning of the fight? Because it seems like you were getting the best of the exchanges and then you decided to try and go for the takedowns. Is it why? Uh, at the end of the first round, he caught me with a left body kick. I don't even think... It would have looked that bad on camera. His coaches definitely picked up on it because I heard them, I heard them shouting, uh, like fatigue, fatigue. Like I, I'm not, I don't speak French. Like <laughs> you'll learn that very quick. But um, I, I kind of knew enough to know that they were, they were calling for like the body, and they were, they, they'd seen that it would like hit me and like sap me with something. But um, yeah, it was really bad. Like every time I crunched down, um, he hit me there a few other times. And, really bad like I was trying to protect it when the clinch exchanges literally just bending down for the takedowns was um, painful but it is what it is and you found it pretty hard last time to fight uh, after your brother are you happy you got it the other way around this time I don't know because like we corner each other and um, obviously like we try and just not be around each other when um, when each other are fighting and it's like you kind of miss that voice, um, the sort of like self right like the writing stuff he does, you know, like little things he says. But um, I don't know. I'll, I'll answer that question once I've cornered him and seen what his fight's like. Because uh, I'm still feeling pretty rough. Well, you called for an easy fight last time. I'm pretty sure you were being sarcastic. No, and I, was, <laughs> I was being deadly serious and no one listened. And then I get this guy who's like this Terminator who's fought everyone. Like he took Mason Jones and Vrchenik the distance. Mm -hmm. Only Jack Shaw finished him, and he's mint, so... Well, we all know cage warriors don't do easy fights, right? We well, think that pressure builds diamonds and all... <laughs> they should start from me, because in my pro career, I've learned to swim in the deep end. All my fights have been ridiculously tough, and I want an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> and did you watch the, uh, the interim featherweight fight last night? Uh, I didn't watch it last night. I, I wanted to get a bed a bit earlier, but I watched it this morning. Uh, what did you think? Kraken fight. Um, they both just hold their heads high. Um, I know it's a bit bad for Charrier being like down two. Um, but Paul, Paul Hughes did what he had to. Like I could see, you know, like the first round's the kind of contentious one. And it's one of those where there's like two obvious rounds for one guy, two obvious rounds for another, and then a contentious round. But no, uh, great fight. You know, Paul Hughes has, has been all right like around the hotel. I'll tell you one thing about Paul Hughes, right? Do you know when George knocked Truman out with a liver shot and said, get this man a pizza? No one finds that funnier than Paul Hughes. He's been like screaming it at my brother through the hotel. Just we walk past, get this man a pizza. Walk past again, hey, get this man a pizza. Ah, and like we were just working out in the thing this morning and it's almost like uncomfortable how funny he finds that. It's like when you tell a joke and someone laughs a bit too much and you're like, all right. But no, class fight, um, mid fight. Can't wait for him versus Wuchenik, the rematch. Uh, I was just going to say, do you have any predictions for that? Uh, like, I'm not saying this is a diss on Vucenic, but he might get another close decision. It's kind of like the, the tie boxing style he does. It's like built into um, like, sort of a more traditional tie boxing game where it's like one for one, but you get one better. Like if you watch how tie fights happen in Thailand, like they, they'll usually like, can, they can consist, like really good ones will consistently edge people out. Like Petrosian's a very Thai style guy in kickboxing, he consistently will, like edge people out and that's what Vucenic's really good at. People like, it's a, it's a hard skill to notice but when you notice it, it is, it is good and it's impressive. Like he does a good job of just staying like one or two ahead of everyone. But yeah, we mid fight. Um, I'm not quite sure where I fit in the division. I don't feel like my, <laughs> my last two performances really warrant anything impressive but I'll have a drink and then I'll probably... I'll have a drink and I'll probably start talking all kinds of... Um, um, he told me I couldn't swear. <laughs>
Well, we find you all very impressive, so we disagree with that. And I know it was your birthday a couple of days ago, so happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, and you uh, can go celebrate now. That's okay. <laughs> well, I'll wait till George is fought and then I'll get, yeah. get some cake. Oh, yeah, don't eat cake now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sick straight away, honestly. My stomach's killing me. Great. <laughs>